ladies and gentlemen. Today we've got Denial Esports NA versus Cognitive Gaming, a snipe or the old snipe team. So let's just kind of start up and let's just go for a little rundown of the teams, what we've got here. So on Denial side, we've got Mesa the Face on Ra, Pompa and Eula on Jungle Naja. And for some reason, I just got dropped like a sack of crap in the camera there. I don't know what's up with that one. Jeff Hindler on Stobek. We've got Met Yankee on Odin. What's that old Met Yankee? What's that like? The Mets and the Yankees. Obviously, I'm EU, but it kind of sounds like the baseball teams that they've got over there. And then you've got Payne Devante on Neef. Okay. So what we've got for Cognitive Gaming, we've got Shing on Fenrir. KO on uh, Shibalanke, actually. We've, I haven't seen Shibalonke in the competitive scene for a while now, actually. It'd be quite nice to see. He obviously does have the, the highest kind of like base scaling towards the end game and damage wise, so it does really well for him. We've got MLC Stealth on Poseidon again, uh, Omega on Vimana, and Allied on Bacchus. So we're going to have a bit of a quite of a tanky lineup. I'm obviously going to see probably like two bruisers coming out there. We're going to see Shing and Omega being bruiser, and Fenrir is pretty. You kind of have to build in Bruiser, otherwise he dies too quickly. We've got D Denial kind of moving around here at the side, probably trying to get like a five-man gank. Obviously, was hoping to see that uh, Cognitive Gaming would be at one of these like gold camps and try and get around the back of them, but didn't quite work out there. Now, interesting to see item-wise here, we've got no Boomba's Mask for Cognitive G Gaming. So as I, was, I kind of said before, the the... The jungling's not, it's kind of like a 50-50. It's, it's a high risk, high reward. What is going on? Oh, he's, Shing's going to get caught out here. Five man team on Shing. Going to get taken out straight away. Gives away the first blood to Denial. It would have been a very clever idea if we got away with it. But, managed to get caught out there. Uh, we, I don't believe that ward was there beforehand. That was just put down afterwards. Otherwise, it would have been quite interesting to see. Let's just actually go back. I want to see if the ward was there. Was it? Yeah, so the ward was here. So we got spotted out by the ward. Everybody kind of knew he was there. And then, yeah, that's it. So, <laughs> And that's all she wrote, folks. <laughs> yeah, so we'll carry on there. Bring it back up. Good idea from Shing, actually. I, I like I like the, the, the idea of it. Just got kind of caught out by the ward placement there so hopefully he gets to go look back and see uh probably just where he kind of messed up there a little bit but surprised to see he's going for like jungle buffs um especially fenrir being in the jungle without a boomer's mask uh definitely interesting one to see to see how let's see how that kind of works out if he's go, gonna jungle quite a bit obviously naja last week naja every team that picked up naja just got annihilated uh, Naja, very good. Obviously, very strong, like, hard carry once the items start kicking in. Obviously, like, level 2, level... It just needs to kind of get there and obviously easily focused. Gets caught out quite a bit towards the end as well, especially in the team fights. If you can kind of... Very strong uh, laning phase with, obviously, obviously the high attack speed there. If you kind of go for, like, Warrior Tabby, probably, like... Uh, Soi uh, Fatalis, or maybe even Executioner Fatalis, and then pick up maybe another speed item after that. Uh, well, after the Deathbringer. That obviously Executioner gives you a lot more shred. Obviously helps you out late game as well when all the the damage items kick in. So we're seeing like a two two v one lane coming on here. So Pain Devante, as long as he can hold off, should do all right for himself. And then we've got Sobek and. Have we got a double roam going on here? Let's just kind of see what's going on with that action on there. So we've got a bit more coming up. But the problem with Shing, obviously Shing's gone for uh, the sh a shell, hog, and to death toll. But if anybody helps him out with, obviously, uh, jungle camps, he won't get full XP. Obviously, Bump, for those of you that don't know, Bumper's Mask gives you, like, max XP from all the, like, the camps as long as you're there. So you get normal XP as, as if you soloed it, even if someone else is there. So it's kind of beneficial for having two people at the camps as possible. So we've got a 2 on 2 lane, so it's not too much bad. Obviously, Denial's got the extra uh, lead ahead, just because of that extra kill. Barker's leaping straight onto Pain of Varney. Pain of Varney backflips out of the way, and then just tries to blow up the, the weave, just to try and catch somebody off guard. So let's just see where Shing is at the moment. Level three, so not to. It's kind of jungle has been a bit of his Achilles heel lately, as we can see. Not to. 
Neve's ultimate coming out. Probably not actually sure where it's going to go. Obviously, MLC Stealth over there in the mid lane is going to see backing off because he's got no mana left. We're going to pick up should. Yeah, should have enough gold now to finish off that Doom Orb. So, paint, uh, MLC Stealth sticking with his like full on aggressive builds that he likes to have with that. Do more first. Very good in lane. Right hand side. We've got the Naja coming in there to get a bit of gank onto the Omega. Omega coming back out, actually, surprisingly enough, for that. Does manage to pop the ult off. But yeah, Pompon, Yulog having a go with that one. It's not too bad. Obviously, if you can just kind of hold him off, does manage to get his ult now, which probably would have helped him out a little bit more. I do believe uh, Omega is CC immune whilst he's in his ultimate phase. So we can't do much. You can't bring him into the air. Shing in a bit of trouble, taking a bit of damage from Sobek. Brutalize onto Sobek. Uh, Jeff did use the ultimate to come out there. Neef ult coming out, locking him in place. Does manage to jump out of the way from the Sobek ultimate just to stop himself there. And then Jeff's going to go down. Going, chasing for that kill is going to get him killed. And there we go. Just being too... It's, it, I can see where he was coming from. I normally say, like, being too greedy. Stealth being caught out here by the Pompon Eula there. I still need to figure out if this is actually the real Pompon. I'm, I'm going to have to ask like somebody at some point. Kraken going out there. Pompon uses the ultimate, Naja ultimate for escape just to get out of there. Very good timing. Obviously, there just would have taken a lot of health from him. Obviously, with the stun as well. If he'd have got the stun off, the whirlpool would have gone down. Would have locked down everything else and just wouldn't got away with that one. So, very well timed there by Pompon Eula. So, we're seeing that... So we've got Vampiric Shroud, right, level 1 Greaves for probably like the, the HP 5 there by Ra, and then we've got Doom Orb coming out. So we've got a lot of like level 1 items, very strange kind of build from face to face coming out there onto the Ra. It's going to see Sh here Shing on at the side there, not quite quick enough to, to kind of like con help contest it, maybe like get a Celestial Beam on the top, could have probably gone through the wall for it though, not too much, but worth a shot sometimes. We see Pompon Yula has finished up uh, Warrior Tabby Boots. So it's going to get that early penetration off. Going to go for the, the damage buff anytime soon. And that, obviously the penetration is going to help, help really well on the Universe Ring. If you can get some very good bounces off between the gods now. And then we've got Pain Devante. Oh, we've got Shin coming around from the right hand side. Is he going to be spotted? Would have been seen by this ward just over by the, the blue there. So they would know he's coming in. We've got MLC Stealth rotating over as well. Would have possibly been sort of seen by the bottom ward. So, to be honest, the whole left-hand side, Neef and Jeff, uh, well, Payne Devante and Jeff here, have been completely covered by wards. They'd have seen everything come in. They'd have known exactly where everybody is. Wouldn't have had a trouble. Neef ult coming now at all. Maybe going straight on to Fenrir, possibly. Fenrir goes up, so the MLC stealth takes the, the ult there. Probably if, if they'd have possibly gone. Ah, oh, Sash and... Gonna, it's going to get that kill, yeah. So, got taken out of the way of the Rara ultimate, but then we've got Fenrir, Brutalize, and possibly, uh, yeah, a Slow and a Celestial Beam coming out there from Ra. Shame, though, that, uh, that, yeah, that Brutalize was strong, but if they could have, they definitely wanted to secure that Poseidon kill, obviously, reset them stacks. So, I can fully understand both ultimates going off there, but it's one of them ones that I like, hit at the moment. If you'd have let the Rara ult go off, or heard the Rara ult go in, You'd be fine, but because you're in tower range, obviously at Naja, you want to get in, get that done, and get out. And obviously, you just want to secure that kill. Don't want to let it go away. But in an ideal world, you'd have got that Rara ult off, uh, saved the Naja ult for possibly like Fenrir, got a double kill, got out alive. Been pretty sound actually. But that brutalizing the end managed to kind of finish that one off, just to kind of crap on Pom Pom's day there. Just a little bit. So Shing managing to pick up at least one kill and one assist during this whole time. So we see two shells on either side. Shell going onto Fenrir. This is the uh, the new ally protection buff. So it's like a uh, girdle of might, but a protection girdle of might for people that don't understand what that is. So the best bit about it is once it's at level three, the 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 it's like forty five percent at plus forty five. Protections for everybody in the area. Default coming out. Don't see where that's going to go. Belch of the Gods going out there. On to Sobek. Sobek. Did, Jeff did go in for a little bit. Go on that one there. But yeah, there also adds. The shell also adds at level 5. It's got two. I can't remember the other one. But one of them is like 15% uh, 
reduction in damage from everything you have. So if you had like Greaves that give you the 5%, and then you had the 15%, I don't know if it stacks, or it's like uh, one does 5%, dropping it 5%, and then you do 15% on that, or 15%, and then 5% stacks on top of that, whatever's left over. It's kind of, I'd love to see how that kind of works out. MLC Stealth taking the, the damage buff. So, okay, this is slightly weird, right? We've got, obviously... I don't know where Shing's going with this. Obviously, he's giving it a go. All right. It's a bit weird. The, obviously, the, the auto attack's coming out from the death tolls, giving him a bit of sustain. He's got a bit more attack speed, a bit more attack power. But then again, if you line it up with Boomer's Mask, with the extra health that it's coming off, obviously, the MP5 is going to help you really well in the jungle. That's pretty much what Shing's doing. Obviously, he's trying to see what's going on. Rara Ultimate, beautiful there. Obviously, with that lovely ward, giving him perfect vision through. Might have actually managed to kill off some of them creeps there and deny that XP to Shing. Shing's level 8. Obviously, Naja here we see is at level 10 at the top side that, that we can carry on from. Bit of action going in on the right-hand side. Proper tower dive. Look at that universe ring bouncing between the two. If you can get the perfect bounces off with no creeps in the way, it's great. Kraken going out there. Trying to go for Sobek, but he managed to get out of the way. Sash missed there by Pompon Yula. Pain Devante just stacking away, chilling away, just clearing these creeps. No worries, no worries. Uh, Pompon in a bit of trouble. Doesn't really want to go in there. Needs to be a little bit careful. Managed to get out of there. Fenrir is going to come around. Use his ultimate. A uh, Ragnarok to pick him up in the air. Just going to hold down there. Pompon uses the ultimate to try and get out of the way, but then just gets caught. Corner, just pretty much there. Just being a bit too greedy. Knowing you, you knew there was at least three members of Cognitive Gaming on the left-hand lane. Then we had an extra Roma, obviously, from Fenrir coming over there, or Shing, or MLC Stealth coming, which was the new addition. And then going for the blue buff while they were there. That's, that's a ballsy move, and... It was like a, it wasn't even like a high risk, high reward kind of thing. It was just a risk. That's just all it was. It was, let's see if I'm, I'm cocky enough to get away with that one. So we see that Brutalize didn't quite catch up after the, the backflip from Pain of Barney. Pain of Barney gets belly flopped on there from Allied. And then Belch of the Gods coming out as well. Belch of the Gods did quite a nice amount of chunk of damage there. Uh, Barkus, no, just going for Midas Boots. Picking up there, obviously that passive gold. Where are we going with that? That's going away for MLC Stealth coming over. We follow that over. Catches him there. Throws him up in the air. Celestial Beam and also the, the healing beam as well. Finishing that one off with a spin from Jeff. So, lovely little combo action. Nice to see. Obviously, we saw Neef charging up. Going there and there. We kind of knew exactly where it was going as well. Perfectly pulled in. Stunned. Charged. Celestial. Boom. Finished. Belgian Gods is there just trying to finish off some of those creeps just to keep them out. Because obviously with the recent changes, any attack from the tower onto creeps completely negates any gold you get from that creep. It's not proportional from the damage anymore. It's complete. As soon as that one hit hits, you get no gold from that creep. So you want to keep it out from under the tower as much as possible. So here we go. We're going to have some more creeps. No, just held out there by Barkus. Probably Belgian Gods there to do quite a bit of damage. And a leap on top. We'll finish them off. Just... Anything you can do to keep the uh, keep the creeps out from underneath the tower, the better. Just as long as they stay out, it's great. Obviously, now we see that Mace of the Face has finished off that Doom Orb. Finished off the Greaves as well. So what is it, the 5%? Or no, gone for the crowd control reduction there. So obviously doesn't want to get stunned out too much. Uh, reduce that as much as possible. Even though he's probably got beads here, he does have beads as well. Just now need to be a little bit aware of that. So we got MLC Stealth going for the Void Stone. Going to go for a Focus Void Stone as well with that extra penetration. Out. Probably got uh, what he likes to go for Gem next. And then probably Rodder to Hootie after that one. Lovely Poison coming out from KO going as well. Rising Jaguar out. Also uses the ultimate as well. Doesn't want to riot, run over. Ragnarok coming out there. We're going to pick up Sobek just as he finishes off that. Ultimate there. Didn't do too much damage to him there. Belch of the Gods coming out there. Jeff getting caught out by Poison. And Intoxicate finished off. Lovely. Beautiful Rar Ultimate coming in there just to help out as well. Kraken coming out there. Picking off Neef. Allied going down there from uh, to Pom Pom. Obviously used that Ultimate to pretty much try and finish off Barkus. But Barkus died 
to the sash as well, so didn't have to really need it. it wasn't too bad in any respect. Anyway, that was a beautiful bra roll, though. I do, I do commend, obviously, Mace the Face with that one. Obviously, with the stacks, did ra ra didn't go down in that engagement, so he's still keeping his stacks. Neither did Poseidon, so still got his stacks. Anybody else for stacking item? No, just Shing. Shing didn't go down in that. Well, not Shing. What am I about? It's KO didn't go down in that fight, in that engagement. So, everybody with the Doom Orb stacks or in the, like, Snowball item stacks, Heartseeker, Doom Orb, still have their stacks. So, it's all pretty good in that respect. So, we got Najar going straight for a Void Blade, actually. Kind of like a an interesting build on Najar, obviously, because... Najar, you're building pretty much for attack speed. The more attack speed you can get on him, the better, the more... He can just put out so much damage. But, kind of got to give it, though, with that extra penetration, obviously, physical uh, protection as well. Makes him last a bit longer. Obviously, he can stay in that fight just a bit longer. And it's not so squishy when it goes up, obviously, against... Uh, how many, like, physical we got? We got Fenrir. Only two physical, actually, but we still got... the. All physical are pretty much like 80 carries. Ragnarok going out there. Picked up Shing, uh, the pom pom there. Used beads to get out of that one. Beautiful. Also, pick. I like to see this as well on Naja. Sprint. So, a level 3, obviously, level 3 sprint. You can attack. At, you can use your attacks, and it, you don't get the movement speed debuff whilst the level 3 sprint's going. So, very works very well. Also, level 1 works as a very good escape. So even off the beautiful snare off there onto Allied by Payne Devani. Works re really well. We've got some rotation coming over there from Mace the Face and Pompon Eula. Mace the Face is going back. Obviously, seen where Poseidon was going. Obviously, MLC Stealth. Didn't need to worry too much. We've got the Mana and Odin just kind of tussling. They don't really do anything to each other. Obviously, you get that solo lane tanks. Just kind of just sit there and farm. That's pretty much all that is. So we've got Shin kind of seeing there. Obviously, in Pompon Eula. Needs to kind of be a little bit aware of what's going on. Uh, Neef going for Executioner first. Bit of an odd one, obviously. You want as much kind of like physical damage as possible. Possibly, uh, I'd have probably gone for like Devourer's Gloves. But that's just me. I'm kind of more... Uh, you get you get more bang for your buck with Devourer's Gloves early. You can get like... Especially if he goes Devourer's Gloves second. It, I'd, I'd like to see what his second item is before I kind of like throw judgment. But if you're going to go for Devourer's Gloves second, it's kind of a bit pointless. Especially against penetration. Ragnarok coming out there. Managed to pick up nobody. Just going to leave. Still gets caught out there by Sobek Ultimate. He does use Brutalize to come back, but does no damage. Obviously, there we've got uh, the shell, the blue animation shell. And then we've got, obviously, Mace of the Face in the mid lane doing some damage. So Shing taking quite a bit of damage in that engagement as well. Allied not doing too well for himself. MLC Stealth. Shin coming around there. Just getting his auto attacks and the life steal there. Off on. So, if you'd have had Boomba's Mask there, you'd have gone over about half health. That's pretty much how that works. So, we got Denial Esports going for the Gold Fury. How are we doing? And they do manage to grab that one. Gold Fury pretty easy. Look at that. Did you see that Universe Ring hit? Shing went across with lovely Neef ultimate there and Ring kind of just taking down Poseidon as well. But I, I'm going to go back on that. Universe Ring was beautiful. Pure luck in how that engagement worked off. Fenrir's going to get kind of messed up. It, no, that's not Fenrir. That was Pom Pom Yula. Just gets taken down by uh, Vimana there. Omega. Uh, Shing on the run away from Odin there. Pom Omega just going to hammer time down on top of everything else. But did you see kind of how that Universe Ring happened? It hit. Uh, it hit KO. Then hit Barkas. Barkas jumped at the same time. I don't know if it was in reaction to kind of get away from it or just jumping out of the way. But as he jumped, the ring followed him. Obviously, because it already started the target tracking that it was going to finish over there. Then managed to just bounce off between him and MLC Stealth. Causing Stealth to take so much unnecessary damage because he wasn't even anywhere near it. Uh, and then it was just kind of brought to him. And then gets taken out taken down by the Neef armor inside the Odin ring and just had nowhere else to go. So lost quite a lot of stacks due to that as well. So didn't do him any favors whatsoever. <laughs> so like just throwing that mini Cyclops creep going out there. So that was a that was a very nice engagement. Not, not, uh, definitely a good pickup by Denial Esports really. They got the gold for you. I can't remember actually how many. It's kind of funny after the team fight they won the team fight anyway. They got more kills and everything like that. They, uh, cognitive 
did manage to kind of come back with a few extra kills in the mid lane, but it was definitely the whole engagement. Denial kind of won that one just good enough. Poor, my voice is dying. <laughs> it's, I've only done like three casts today. This is my third cast today, and it's already sore as hell. So I just have to get used to that a little bit more. So you can see my voice kind of cracking up a little bit. You see how it goes. So, like I say, we've definitely had a full-time jungler shing. And if we look at the kind of like jungler stacks, uh, stats, all right? So we've got Pompa and Eula, all right? So done the jungle in as usual. And now got definitely an interesting build. Coming out now with a Witchstone as well. Just trying to slow down them all attacks and just building proper Bruiser Naja. So it's kind of like an interesting thing to go with. But like I was saying, so we've got three kills, three deaths, three assists on Naja. On Shing, we've got two kills, three deaths, four assists. So it kind it's, it's it's only like that a difference between a kill and an assist is the only difference between the two, pretty much, other than that. And the rest, okay, so there's a two level difference. There was about a three level uh, three level difference because I swear Shing was le at level twelve when we started the conversation. But that's kind of like how much of a difference that Bumba's mask can really make, and it's not done him any favors in not buying the. the because he still even bought a, a starter item, okay? He bought Death Toll. So we still bought a starter item. So I kind of, I don't see that working very well. I like taking a lot of damage there. But obviously, Universe Ring went over to KO, went down to the, the minions and didn't bounce back enough as it actually hoped. But it was a good bit of, like, poke damage on there. Obviously, only two cooldowns there. Not too much to worry about. Two there. Ooh, we're going to see some bit of a dive going on there. Good. Sash on Shing. Charge there. Thrown back. Leaps out of the way. Gets the spin up onto Allied. Allied takes the Sneef ult to the face. And also, Shing managed to get hit by Mace to the face's ultimate as well. Beautiful Ras snipe onto Shing. Didn't manage to kill him off, but look at that. Hitting down so low that he just can't stay. And look, he's even jumping out of the way just because that tower dive was so... It was just going to happen always. This tower is going to go down as well as the middle one as well. So we can see that Omega's going... Not Omega. What am I mean about? Uh, Met Yankee, Met Yankee. I just feel that it's, he should be playing like Hercules with a baseball bat, and I'd just be calling a uh, baseball bat, and uh, I'd be calling him like a Yankee player. Going on, it does go down just as the Shivalanke armor goes off. Doesn't stun anyone though. Pomponula getting out of the way, getting hit by the brutalized by uh, Shing. Shing going after Pompon there. Manages to pick up the kill, but needs to be a little careful there. Gets. Uh, Matt Met Yankee on Odin gets blown up by the Kraken. Does manage to leap over the wall and Pain Devante managed to get a beautiful snare off onto Omega and Stealth to stop the pursuit. Obviously, you've got Barkas jumping over there trying to chase down Met Yankee. Doesn't manage to get in range for a belt, so couldn't do anything else to finish him off. So that was a one-for-one -one trade. But they managed to pick up two towers in that engagement. If we can see by the tower at the bottom, towers on the minimap, Denial have all their towers okay so three towers down for cognitive gaming but all six are still up for obviously denial here so it's definitely an interesting build um i i i honestly don't know okay that it, it's a it's a weird one i'd love to speak to obviously uh pomponula just to kind of check out i'm right i'm gonna go on a whim here and say that's the usual pompom -pom, okay Pom pom you la la. That's pretty much. It's just probably on like I don't know. Too cute. I don't know who did pom pom actually play for now. Obviously he doesn't play for curse anymore. Uh, not sure. Not sure. Don't really know. Don't really know. But pom pom you la. Obviously a very interesting build. Makes it quite tanky, obviously, against the physicals. And then it's getting some more attack speed in. So there is a, like one attack speed item. Then we're going to get Chin's Blades in there. Obviously, it's not Quinn's Blades. It's Chin's Blade. That's the proper pronunciation for it. Chin's Blade's in there. Just to get the attack speed up. So once the attack speed starts kicking in. So basically, what he's done. Okay, well, I can see kind of what he's done. He's built Bruisery so he can survive the fights in the early stages. Now, as long as he can survive some of the fights, he can put out enough little bits of damage. Obviously, with the damage buff there, obviously, you can see the, the sash grabs do nice amount of damage. Obviously, up there against KO. Need to pull myself back a little bit there. Uh, Ragnarok coming out there. No beads to stop that down. Uh, Shing taking a lot of damage during that. And then a beautiful sash and dash from uh, 
pom pom there going straight for MLC stealth gets the Kraken out didn't take too much damage some blue little line Oh no, it's, it's the blue skin. It's the sash. Look, it's like a laser beam. I'm going to get you, Stealth. I'm going to get you. Nope. Manages to reset. Whirlpool coming out there from uh, Stealth. Just trying to stop this Mace of the Face. Celestial Beam should go through. Does manage to hit. There is a delay on that. Carrying on. So let's get back over here to Jeff. Just kind of messing around with the two. Obviously taking a lot of damage from KO. Haha. <laughs> That's a shame the creeps were there. Otherwise, that would have caused so much damage onto KO there with that Universe Ring. Omega in a bit of trouble. Obviously, one... 1v4 needs to kind of just use his ultimate and just get out of it. But as I was saying about the, the Najar build, it's kind of, as long as he's tanky early on, and now he can start building to damage. Obviously, as definitely as well against, obviously, like, uh, auto attackers, Sh uh, KO on, Shivalanke, Shing on, Fenrir. This debuffs their uh, physical power and their attack speed. So it causes them to do less damage and also, obviously, slows them down as well. So, it's it's a good little damage reduction on them as well. Obviously, it'll pull, pull like... How to say it? Um, it will pull... Pull Shibalonki's damage back down to just below par. Which bring... Yeah, because obviously, Shibalonki is very good late damage, kind of, like, scaling. His scaling works very well. But, obviously, up against the Witch Blade here. Uh, the Witch Stone. I think it's Witch Stone. Yeah, Witch Stone. It just slows him down. That's, that's pretty much how that works. And then also the fact that it's got physical protection as well. Lovely. Just works out really well. Kind of slows down everybody in some respect. Still doing lots of damage, though. Got to give him that. Obviously, the two attack speed items. Obviously, the extra penetration from the, the, void, the void Blade and water, Warrior Tabby Boots. I might even give this build a go. It looks an interesting build, especially. Definitely. I like it. I like it. Obviously, you've got to work as a team. I love working as a team. Well, we can all see how that kind of go. So actually, instead of like a gem of isolation, we're seeing uh, MLC Stealth taking a best prey of Valor instead of the, the slow. Obviously, he's thinking, I'm getting torn apart, okay? I'm getting torn apart by the Neath Ultimate, and then obviously Najar grabbing me with a sash. Najar's focus, oh, Pompon's focusing Stealth all the time. Every time you see stealth coming into a fight, bang, there's Pompon straight on top of him. That's, but that's what you should do. As a DPS or carry or assassin or everything like that, you find them weak squishy mages. You go for them. Ragnarok coming in there straight onto Mace of the Face. Does manage to feed out of it and a beautiful Aegis there to stop the Kraken from kicking his ass. Uh, does backflip out. Omega going for it. Obviously Shin going over the top. Getting slowed out there as well, but there was a Shell Aura going out. Uh, Pain of Monty and a bit of trouble underneath that. There's no backflip gets taken out. We do have uh, Najar Pompon taking MLC Stealth. You see what I mean? Straight away. Straight for MLC Stealth. Going to go up there. Probably if he had a Universe Ring would have done so much damage. That uh, Tower managing to finish off Stealth. Uh, we've got Pompon chasing off the Shing. If he'd have carried on going, we'd, he would have seen that and got that kill. Backing out there. So close to him. Such a shame. Should have picked up, obviously, Fenrir as well. Would have been beautiful. Would, would have come around the corner, used the Sash. Bang, finish, you're dead. That's pretty much how that would have worked out. Can I pick up the right hand side tower now? Lovely. See, Shing's back already. Bloody hell, that was quick. Omega taking so much damage there. Well, not even so much damage, taking half damage. But then again, so half damage on a Vamana. That's a lot of DPS going out onto it. So, missed Universe Ring there. Just, ah, it's fine. Nothing major. Nothing major too much. I wonder if these are subs for Denial. Be interesting to see. Good pluck there onto the mana. Omega using his ultimate to get back out of the way. There we got Ra Beam straight onto Ally, taking that to the face. Obviously, all the damage is going onto the tanks at the minute. Obviously, everyone's pretty bruisery, and KO is staying at the back of the fight. Good sash. Just missing, unfortunately, there onto Omega. Kind of need to be a little bit careful. Obviously, the, the dash from Sobek was just into fruition for, well, just in coordination with the, the sash, the armillary sash from, obviously, Pom Pom there. Tower's definitely going to go down. There it goes. Omega trying to stop it as much as possible. Another sash missed there. It's, it's kind of one of them ones you go for, like, a while and you'll hit every sash. And then all of a sudden you'll miss every sash. It's just the way, kind of, the cookie, cr the cookie crumbles, as we like to call it. Well, I like to say it. They're going to get that... 
damage buff. No, I don't think Met Yankee's got the DPS for it. Re really? He's going to waste a Ragnarok on Met Yankee? That was wi weird. Okay, so for the last two games I've played of Shing, uh, Castle Shing has been very strange. Kraken coming out there, finally in the end bounces out. So we should get, Met Yankee should go down. But uh, Umbrella Rang manages to miss. Oh my God, Met Yankee's going to get away with it. How on earth did he get out of that one alive? Beautiful snare there from, obviously, Pain Devante's one managed to kind of just stop the pursuit in its tracks outside the Fire Giant Cave. But oh my god, they blew everything on him. There was shame there was no brutalized coming out from Shin because that could have just finished him off. But really, this they've been off this game quite a lot. Don't know what's going on today, folks. Very unusual. We do get to see the new shield item coming out onto Odin. But good to see which which kind of tier three he takes with that one. Could obviously take. It gives him either. Extra, like, 35 magical protection at level 3 just from being hit, but it can only happen, like, every... for 5 seconds, but only every, like, 20 seconds or something like that. Or he can get his, hate, like, health per 5 increased by 100%. So if he's got, like, health per 5 or, like... No, he doesn't really got any health per 5 items. Gold Fury coming out there from Denial. He's going to pick it up. Should do. Should be pretty easy. There we go. Probably secured up. Fist of the Gods actually coming out on Sobek, so not worried too much. Obviously, the Hand of the Gods out there onto the Odin. And I don't believe Odin was there in the fight, so managing to pick it up on the... Shing just getting caught. Oh, just seeing him running and then managed to see the fact that the spear's coming out down. Not doing too well. Obviously, this middle tower is going to be the main focus now. We could possibly see a Fire Giant attempt come out, though. Everybody's backing. They could just... Take the tower and go. All right. Well, there's, there, well, there's no way they can defend the tower, so that just went down instantly. And I also, I can also see as well. You know, I've, I've been harping on so much about this Najar built, but it's kind of Najar is built for attack speed. It works out very well. Good kind of like every engagement's going on here. A bit of a sash. But then if you couple the fact that Najar is a bit tanky now, a bit less attack speed, but then put in Met Yankees too. The attack speed shout from the Odin. There you go. That's all you're missing attack speed on Naja. That's pretty much it. As well, with Flaming Spear, oh, you're hitting the cap. There's, there's there's no doubt that you're going to hit the cap. So we're going to see a golf, uh, Fire Giant attempt come out from... Uh, is they going to bait it? Are they just going to sit there and look? They look like they're just kind of going for it, baiting it a bit. There's no shout coming out. So they've looked like they've gone for it. Just messing around. And there we go. So we've got Pom Pom going in. Jeff as well. Good sash. It hit him, but it didn't actually take him towards it. Just going after everything. Ally taking so much damage. Does back out of there. Uh, we do... When the hell did that fire giant go down? Jesus. Nephol coming out. Intoxication. Ragnarok as well. Ragnarok not grabbing anybody. Just, just getting out of there. Ally getting taken out there by the ultimate from Pom Pom. And then gets... Surrender vote from Shin coming out there. So, what a action-packed game. Definitely some interesting builds, some interesting ideas. Obviously, we've got the the non Boomba's mask jungler from Shin over there, and then obviously the the bruisery build on Naja for Pompon. It was def definitely very interesting to see. Uh, I quite liked. I quite like it actually. It's definitely a nice build to have, especially with an Odin on your team for an extra shout. Okay, let's just see the player damage coming out there. Obviously, Mace of the Face doing really well, obviously, with that Doom Orb. Never dying once. Pretty much perfect game for him. Uh, we've got a lot of damage coming out there from Pompon Eula. And then, no one really... Apart from Omega, doing a lot of damage. But that's just Omega. Just stand there and AoE kind of DPS everybody. It's just been a really action-packed game. Quite enjoyed that casting out myself, even though my voice is dying. Hope you guys have enjoyed that, guys and girls. I know some, there are some girls out there that watch Smite, and we do appreciate you. And we love the girls in the scene. It's great fun. So, if you like everything you see and you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Um, because there will be more. Obviously, like the video, leave comments. I'm always interested in feedback as well. And I'll see you guys next time. Have fun. Bye.